provided by. If you have moderate to severe Crohn's disease, SkyRizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor that can deliver clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Control of Crohn's means everything to me. Ask your gastroenterologist about SkyRizzy. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Tomorrow, only ETs at home with Mick Fleetwood in Maui. The whole town is no more. He lost his rest. Happening now. A grand jury indicted the couple connected to a deadly dog attack. The victim's family tells us that they're happy with the criminal justice case, but they hope the law will change so this doesn't happen to anyone else. Dehumidifiers and pressure cookers, just a few of the items making it to this week's recall roundup. Also tonight, a warning for parents, a toddler tower also being recalled after several children were hurt. Tracking some energy headed into the Gulf, it could bring us some tropical moisture. I'll have an update in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. Now tonight, justice for 81-year-old Ramon Najera, who was killed in a dog attack earlier this year. This morning, a grand jury indicted the couple who own those dogs. Our Camelia Juarez is live at the Bear County Courthouse. Camelia, you actually spoke with the Najera family. What are they saying tonight? Steve, Stefania, Raymond's son, or the son, victim's son, Raymond Najera, says that this is a step in the right direction and he hopes to see the dog owners get the maximum sentence. Christian Moreno and his wife, Abilene Schneider, were indicted on charges of attack by a dangerous dog, causing death and reckless bodily injury to the elderly. In February, firefighters found 81-year-old Najera on the ground outside a home being attacked by dogs. His wife, Juanita, also injured and taken to the hospital. Firefighters had to fight the dogs off with pickaxes so they could get to Najera, who later died of his injuries. The Najera family says Juanita is recovering well physically, but she's dealing with a lot of emotional pain. Oh, it's a great, good, great progress. I mean, I've been waiting for a little, for a little while, but I'm, I was, was patient. I knew they were vigilant in uh, making sure we had all the facts and, and the, and the uh, testimonies from all the witnesses. And the indictment comes nearly six months after the attack, and in response to that attack, the city is proposing an increase to the animal care services budget so they can hire more officers to respond to dangerous dog calls. The proposed budget, which was discussed today at City Council, increases the department's budget by 26 percent while adding nearly 30 new positions. Now, a vote on the proposed budget is expected early next month, and the couple, if the couple is convicted, they could be facing over 20 years in jail. Right now, they're out on bond and awaiting their day in court. Live from the Bear County Courthouse, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. A man is dead. Bear County Sheriff's deputies looking for the hit and run driver they say is responsible for his death. Happened last night about 930 along the I-35 access road between Shepherd and Lucky Roads, not far from Lytle. Deputies say after hitting the 46 year old victim, whoever was in the vehicle just drove off. 35 Access Road at Shepherd Road was temporarily closed to let emergency crews work. The man was taken to the hospital where he later died. Right now, there is no description of the vehicle or the driver involved. Now, Crime Stoppers and SAPD need your help to solve a double murder. The victims in this case are 15 and 19 years old. The bodies of Angel Rey Garcia and Gregorio Cordova Meja were found at the Union Pines Apartments near Pleasanton Road and Southwest Military Drive last July. Both of them had been shot multiple times. So investigators are urging anybody who knows anything that could lead them to a suspect to call San Antonio Crime Stoppers. That number is right there at the top of your screen. It's 210-224-STOP. Considered armed and dangerous. Now the latest on the blue alert issued by DPS in the search for two men wanted in connection to a Harris County deputy being shot. DPS troopers have one of those suspects in custody. This morning, 37 year old James Green taken into custody, but state troopers are still looking for the second suspect, 34 year old Taryn Green. According to Harris County Sheriff's, the suspects allegedly shot the 29 year old deputy during a traffic stop in Northeast Houston. 
The deputy rushed to the hospital by medical helicopter at last check. The wounded deputy was said to be in critical but stable condition. Following the shooting, DPS issued a blue alert that you may have received on your phone last night. Anyone who has seen Taryn Green should call police. Helping elementary school students kick off the new school year on the right foot. The goal behind a school supplies giveaway this morning. School kits containing crayons, pencils, notebook, paper and erasers delivered to Mary Hooper's Elementary School to be handed out. The free supplies donated to the student group by the group Texas Yes, which is part of the nonprofit group SA Yes. Texas Yes partnered with Thomas J. Henry to collect the items. The school's principal says these donations offer parents some extra relief with back to school expenses. The parents feel the load lifted off of their shoulders as it is they're struggling to make ends meet and to be able to give their kids extra things is very difficult. And so we're very excited when we get any kind of donations uh, to our, our families because they're very, very grateful for it. Texas Yes says that by providing students with supplies and other resources needed in the classrooms, well, that helps them achieve academic success yeah, and start the school year off right. So now let's talk about college students because the ones in our area are already getting ready for the new academic year. Students at UTSA are moving in this week and this year some 4600 students are going to be in campus housing. Now we're told the school housing at UTSA's main and downtown campuses are at full capacity. Resident assistants who live and work on campus help the students settle in this morning. They were there to greet their parents and the students. University officials are hoping that students take advantage of the benefits that come along with living on campus. Close proximity to numerous academic support services, but also like our dining hall, which is right behind you, um, uh, tutoring services, the classrooms. For us as an RA, we have different complexes and each RA will help them communicate with them, have them a one-on-one -on -one discuss, not only personally, professionally, but also academically. Yeah, they get a lot of support. So UTSA student enrollment is increasing, by the way. Now, to accommodate the growing population, UTSA is planning to build a new living community. It's going to be called Blanco Hall. Construction on it is going to start this fall, and more than 500 undergraduate students can stay there. They need it. Some popular products you may have in your home are recalled tonight, including kitchen appliances, and scented candles. 12 your sides, Marilyn Moritz has our recall roundup beginning with some big name dehumidifiers that are linked to several fires. Unplug it. One and a half billion dehumidifiers sold under various brands, including GE and Kenmore, are recalled. The appliances made by Gree a decade ago are linked to 23 fires. The models are on our website. It is not the first, so the Consumer Product Safety Commission warns check your dehumidifier to see if it's part of previous GRI recalls. Those are linked to hundreds of fires and possibly four deaths. We have more information on our website. Kitchen Danger Sencio is recalling 860,000 pressure cookers after 61 people suffered burns, some severe. The brands are Bella, Bella Pro Series, Cooks, and Crux. The lid can unlock and the cooker can be opened, splashing hot food. Power down. Costco is recalling 350,000 UBO Labs power banks. It has reports of three fires, including one on a commercial flight. Costco is giving refunds. Parent alert, these toddler towers can tip. Simple A3 company is recalling 108,000 of them after reports children got hurt. Contact the company for a fix. And don't get burned. Target is recalling more than 2 million threshold candles. The glass can break while the candle is lit. These are one wick and three wick candles sold since early 2020 in a long list of scents. Take it back. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Now, other news making headlines. A far wet right website has published some of the purported names, photos, and addresses of the grand jurors who indicted former President Donald Trump and 18 others in Georgia. Now, the problem is that website, which we won't name, often features violent rhetoric. It's unclear if those names, however, are the actual grand jurors or just other people with the same names. Meanwhile, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office says that it's going to respond quickly to credible threats because, of course, they want to keep the jurors safe.
Boy, oh boy, the road to recovery continues on the island of Maui. FEMA now sending more aid to help the survivors of the deadly wildfire that destroyed the town of Lahaina last week. More than 100 people dead, about 1,000 others still missing. As ABC's Melissa Adon explains, with hundreds of homes and buildings destroyed, people who've been left with next to nothing now trying to figure out what's next. A tragedy forever scarring the island of Maui as the federal response to this disaster grows. The wildfire in the historic city of Lahaina destroying homes, beloved buildings, and killing more than 100 people. And many more remain unaccounted for. Search and recovery efforts continue. Red Cross volunteers gathering donations for the thousands impacted. My organization uh, has been at every major disaster in the United States for as long as it's existed. I have been in every major disaster in the United States for the past decade. This is unprecedented, Chief. Impacted residents are now working to figure out long-term housing plans. FEMA promising to aid as long as it takes, and they're on the ground asking residents to apply for the disaster relief. We will continue to provide support to Hawaii for as long as is necessary. Um, but the people of Hawaii, they deserve a recovery that not only addresses their immediate needs, but that positions them as an example of resilience strength and resolve as haunting images from survivors and their harrowing tales are told video captured by Lahaina residents show the frightening scenes as they were caught in the wind whipped inferno showing how they huddled against the seawall for hours some jumping into the ocean waiting to be rescued the cause of the fires has not yet been determined by officials, but this video shows what could be an early trigger. A witness describes a flash that might be a tree falling on a power line. The power goes out, our generator kicks in, the camera comes back online, and then the forest is on fire. Firefighters are still working on fully containing all of the wildfires that are burning on this island, making a lot of progress since last week. Melissa Don, ABC News, Maui. I want to show you something on TransGuide right now. This is I-35 at Bronig Lake. And what, what's happening here is some sort of a backup. What is not good is you see a big truck doing it right there. They're going across a very dry median in their vehicles that are very hot. That could potentially spark some sort of fire. It actually looks like there's a dark spot off to the right that may have already sparked a fire again. Sorry, I misspoke. This is I-37 at Bronig Lake. There's some sort of backup. Not sure what's happening further down the road, but you can see some, a lot of people just taking the exit there. Some, though, are just crossing the median. There goes another one crossing the median in a hot vehicle that could spark some flames pretty easily. Adam Cass. Yeah, it can happen quickly with the ground is like kindling right now. It is very dry and it's uh, also very low humidity this afternoon and that adds to the fire potential 105 the high temperature so far today we will have the complete update at six o'clock that could rise another degree maybe even two regardless it's a record by one degree and the average high is now down to 96. it was 97 climatologically the hottest time of year now it's down to 96. we're starting to round that bend in terms of the averages del rio 108 along with floresville Panamaria maria 107 108 in Mico, Lavernia 108. I actually just checked the temperature at Stinson Municipal Airport on the south side. 108 the temperature at Stinson. Clear sky this evening, southeasterly breeze 5 to 15, increasing humidity by 10 o'clock. We're near 90 degrees, and then tomorrow morning near 80. Get ready for a shift in our weather pattern. Our triple digit streak is likely to come to an end, and a shot at rain to talk about. See you in a bit. That's what we're excited about, Adam. Thank you. Now, straight ahead, wildfires triggering what's being called a crisis situation in Canada and also a hurricane in the Pacific has some Californians on high alert. Details after the break. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what's coming your way today on the news at 6 o'clock. A fight over a police dog in shirts is sparking some outrage. The former handler wants his partner to come home and retire. But the police chief says not so fast how the community is getting involved in this dispute now. Plus, a Bear County judge sentences a man for violently shaking his own baby. Coming up, hear his emotional plea to the judge for leniency here. 
and a closer look at the uns unsung heroes of precision and patriotism. We go behind the scenes with the Air Force Honor Guard, showcasing their dedication, discipline, and what defines their mission. That and more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. Well, we've been talking about the devastation on Maui, but extreme weather and wildfires are threatening parts of North America. Yeah, mass evacuations are in place in Canada as more than a thousand wildfires continue to burn. Patrick Cornell shares how extreme heat and hurricanes are also threatening people's lives. Massive walls of raging flames surrounding nearly every side of a family fleeing wildfires in Hay River, Canada. A woman in the car says the inferno was so intense the vehicle started melting during the drive. It's just smoke. It's just smoke. A woman engulfed by smoke evacuating Yellowknife calls it a terrifying experience. The premier of the Northwest Canadian Territories is urging people to obey evacuation orders, saying in a statement, we're all tired of the word unprecedented, yet there is no other way to describe this situation. Toxic smoke once again triggering unhealthy air quality in the northern United States. This is a rapidly evolving situation. Our hearts and thoughts are with every community in the Northwest Territories who's been impacted, every person who's having to leave their home, and all the firefighters and emergency responders who are on the ground helping to keep people safe. Along the California-Oregon border, this fire is almost around We're escaping us, but the fire. My people are fleeing the flames of three wildfires that have merged together. Meanwhile, two deaths are being investigated in Oregon as being potentially related to the heat waves striking the state. Officials there warning people trying to cool down in water. Jumping into water, even as warm as 75 degrees, can cause your body to be stunned. This, as Hillary rapidly intensifies in the Pacific, it's forecast to reach Category 4 hurricane strength by Saturday as it approaches the Baja California Peninsula. I'm Patrick Cornell reporting. Okay, so we're dealing with the heat over here. Yeah. Obviously, we know that 517 right now, 106 degrees. I believe this is near the airport. Uh, now we're going to send things on over to Adam Kasky because there is something around the corner that we that seems potentially good. Yes, yeah, some tropical moisture could head yeah. our way. I know Hurricane Hillary is likely to bring some heavy rain to California, parts of western Arizona, and even Nevada. That's what we could use is tropical moisture and there's a chance for a bit of it. Let's take a look at our rain chances early next week, particularly by Tuesday and possibly even lingering into Wednesday. We do it and have a shot at some showers and thunderstorms. Right now we've got 40% chance Tuesday, 30% chance on Wednesday. Still some unknowns. Keep in mind we're trying to predict a disturbance, a system that hasn't even developed yet. So we're trying to predict something that we can't even measure. So that adds a bit of complexity to it. Upper level high, it's over New Mexico right now. This is gonna be moving. This is gonna be shifting our weather pattern. This is what I mean by a change in our weather pattern next week. It's still in control this weekend and even through Monday, but then it heads farther to the north and that opens the door for this disturbance to sneak into the Gulf of Mexico by Sunday. 30% chance of tropical development with this. It seems like it's gonna be moving a little too fast for much development, but the Gulf of Mexico is like jet fuel right now with how hot the water is. So it's not going to take much, but right now the Hurricane Center just has that 30% chance of developing into a tropical depression. Regardless, it's going to have a lot of moisture with it, and that's what we need. The big question is on Tuesday when that moisture moves inland, where exactly, what track is this going to take, and where's the rain going to end up? So here's another way to look at it. What we know right now that the disturbance that enters the Gulf on Sunday, we know that the rain moves inland on Tuesday, but what we're watching for is exactly where is that rain going to move inland? It could be anywhere from Houston down to Brownsville. We could be right in the good sweet spot or just outside of it. We don't know yet. It's impossible to tell. We're also watching for the potential for organization and a bit of strengthening in the Gulf. As I mentioned, that 30% chance new drought monitors in. It's not good news. 71% of Texas is in drought. Some of the worst drought is right here. Fredericksburg. Kerrville, Bandera, Bernie, Fair Oaks Ranch, and even toward Bulverde and even San Antonio. Coming up at six, I'll give you a comparison to just two months ago, the kind of changes that have been made in this drought monitor. 52nd 100 degree day so far this year, that's today, gives us 19 consecutive 100 degree days. We're making the run for 21 
And I think we're going to do that. That was our most ever in a row. Look at Del Rio at 110 along with Catula, Pleasanton 108 along with Austin. Stinson now 107, Pleasanton I mentioned 108, Rio Medina and Castroville 107. We're feeling the heat now. Tomorrow morning 78, by the afternoon 105. That would be a record by one degree here in San Antonio. And very similar temperatures across the board. New Braunfels 106, Kerrville maybe 104. Again, we're watching that tropical moisture, and I'll have another update on uh, this system and talk more about it coming up at 6. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, we know when the Wemby era <laughs> officially begins now. Yes, and it officially begins regular season at home with the Spurs coming up. The Spurs released their schedule today. We're going to give you some of those highlights and tell you when Wemby will make his regular season debut. Plus, San Antonio FC picked up three points last night, which put them back in first place coming up. Amazing, amazing. You know, I think uh, for me, uh, I feel so comfortable here. This is my home. Santiago Patino is back home, and he responded with a goal for San Antonio FC last night in Big Board Sports. The Spurs today announced their 2023-24 regular season schedule. Wimby and company will open the regular season on October 25th at home with Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Fans in attendance will receive a free Spurs t-shirt to celebrate the start of the season. Free is always good. The Spurs annual rodeo road trip will feature a nine-game away stretch starting February 7th where the Spurs will visit Miami, Orlando, Brooklyn, Toronto, Dallas, Sacramento, LA Lakers, Utah, and Minnesota before coming back home February the 29th. So here's a few highlights. Again, the Spurs will open the regular season October 25th at home with Dallas. The Spurs' first road game is October 29th at the L.A. Clippers. The first time they'll face the champion Nuggets will be on November 26th at Denver. The Spurs will open 2024 on the road at Memphis. The rodeo road trip is February 7th through the 27th, and the Spurs will end the regular season April 14th at Detroit. And, like it or not, the Spurs will play two games again this season at the Moody Center in Austin. Pop alluded to it last season that the Spurs will return, and they sure are. So those games are March 15th and 17th versus Denver and the Brooklyn Nets. Again, both games will go down at the Moody Center. San Antonio FC beat Rio Grande Valley FC 2-1 last night at Toyota Field to take over first place in the USL Championship Western Conference with 46 points. Santi Patino scored in his second match back with the club and his first at home since rejoining the team. No, it's, it's great to be here. You know, before the game, I was I always praying. I was thanking God to bring him out here. Uh, I think in Brazil, you know, I grow so much. And I just look at that experience like I'm a better player than I am now than before. So I just come here to help the team and to apply the experience that I gain over there. Rita Zohir gave SAFC the lead 2-1 in the 30th minute with that sweet goal. San Antonio FC is home again, hosting Monterey Bay FC on Saturday at 8 p.m. Those are some moves right Those there. Those are some the awesome end. moves. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. You got it. And we'll be right back after the break. Yeah, so we're on alert right now for traffic. This is I-35 at Walsham Road, where you can see there's some activity there on the shoulder, a fire truck, another vehicle behind it, and it is causing a bit of a backup, so just want to put you on alert. Thank you so much for watching the news at 5. World News Up next. We'll see you back here at 6.